Sebastian Bourdais, Mike Conway are the back-to-back double dip winners here to help us uh, help us break down what happened and how often that happens is Rob Falls. Hey, Falsey, who knew Ernie Banks was an IndyCar fan? Oh, yeah, let's play too. <laughs> Wonderful, let's play too. <laughs> uh, does that happen often? Last time it happened was, I believe, when they had to do that was 2008 when they had that issue. Uh, and the prior to that, when they did an actual double down in one day was when they took a 250 mile race. And I think this was 2011 in Texas and they split it up into, into a day night double header with 125 laps each. So instead of taking uh, the original, they just kind of split it in half and had an intermission and then rolled her out again. <laughs> but it was about, uh, I guess seven, eight years ago when they actually had to, uh, you know, do the double in one day because of rain. Right, throw Jimmy Holmes from on the organ for a little bit, and then they come back out. Yeah, you gotta like it, man. You know, and he, he didn't have to. I don't believe he had to leave the the uh, stadium. I believe it was one ticket, two games. Type well, thing. I know that they had sold Saturday only tickets and Sunday only tickets. Was yeah. there, did they handle that properly yesterday? Was everyone allowed? And was it uh, were there any problems with the fans? They did it exactly the way they should. They said, "Come on back in." Well, it may not be the seat you had uh, the other day, but you're gonna have a seat. So. Uh, the people at the Honda Indy knew exactly what to do with it, and I thought handled it brilliantly uh, under the circumstances. So it was such a sloppy day on on Saturday, um, you know, for the safety of the drivers, and they they looked at uh, everything that they could because these guys can drive in the rain. Right. They do have rain tires, but uh, just for the safety of the drivers, especially on that back stretch where they were throwing up water big time, nobody in, let's say, from car five back could see because yeah. it's just a wall of water that was being thrown up by these cars. Rob Falds, uh, my friend and yours worked on the, uh, the Honda Indy Toronto over the weekend. Is, is it a step closer, or a step back from the Toronto Indy of the glory days? I think it's getting closer because we're starting to get some really eng- engaging personalities. Uh, you know, you still have Elio Castro Neves, but with the addition of guys like James Hinchcliffe, uh, Mike Conway is a fired up guy. You're starting to see, I think it started to gain in appreciation again. That split that they had, that nasty split they had when they went yeah. to IRL and IndyCar and Card and I don't know what else, whatever else they had for that brief time, put such a huge wedge into the fan base. Uh, and the fans, you know, it was kind of like baseball fans uh, after the strike kind of said, okay, you yeah. prove it to me. And some have slowly drifted back. And I think more and more they're developing a series, uh, the, the – IndyCar uh, president was into the studio yesterday for a tour just to take a look at Sportsnet. And, uh, you know, we happened to mention that we thought it was gaining in popularity and awareness. He said, geez, that's nice to know. He says, we're catching that feeling too, but it's nice to hear it from somebody else. You know, it's, it's great to say it in our corporate office. But we were down there Friday, and it was jammed Friday. A lot of people walking around, big smiles on their face. Uh, they just love the event. I, I love the analogy to baseball. So I got the idea for the for the next step for IndyCar. Just get all the drivers on juice and have them hit home runs. <laughs> <laughs> well, these guys aren't very big. I don't know if no. you get them even the center straightaway center field. I'm sure they'll try. <laughs> right, right. Maybe you should have maybe a line drive hitting contest with these guys. <laughs> Pull the softball fences out. Yeah, you know, and these guys can run for when you think they can do 500 mile races and. They yeah. don't get out of the car. They, you know, these guys probably they'll be intense. You know that they'd be fired up to do it. They might run through the wall if you say, you know, let's have a fly ball catching contest. They'll <laughs> run through the wall. Um, speaking of personalities, and Rob Falls joining us here on Tim and Sid. Speaking of personalities, uh, what's what's James Hinchcliffe got to do to perform at home? I think he's just got to forget about the pressure uh, of being here. He made just one mental lapse when the accident happened at that turn at turn three when he saw the uh, John Juan Pablo Montoya and Aloshan go on top of each other. He tried to slow down too quickly. You do that, you slap on the brakes. It's like slapping on the brakes on ice when it's wet, and he just slid into the tire wall, and then they did what they had to do was pay attention to the one car on top of the other. And so he went four laps down and got himself in trouble in the second race when he was, I thought, rolling very well. I just think it's a matter of just saying, okay, this is like being anywhere else. Um, he may stretch himself a little too thin because he's in his hometown. He's got his family, friends. He's got his hometown sponsors. Oh. Um, but, yeah, I guess that's the same for anybody. If you're uh, you know, a native of Indy and you're racing an Indy guy like Ed Carpenter, that's his home track. That 
Uh, imagine the pressure there to uh, run at Indy um, it is very, very high. I think it's just going to be one of those things. It's, uh, you know, it's like saying uh, you don't know what it's like until you've won one. Uh, he's just got to throw that off and say, okay, let's just do it. Let's get the W and forget about where we are. Just win the race. Not a huge car racing guy, as you could probably tell. Um, but I, I did do some reading along the weekend and started to notice that there are some rumors circulating that Hinchcliffe might be a free agent at the end of the season. What do you yeah, think? There was, a, there was a story in Indianapolis, in one of the Indianapolis newspapers, that uh, he has an option year for next year, and he was to alert Andretti Racing whether or not he was uh, going to have them pick up their option, and he had a uh, cut-down date. Uh, he told them that uh, I think at this particular time he is not ready to say yes to his option, and I think that's because he's going to wait to see if anybody comes knocking on their door, on his door, or he hears uh, some sniffing around by you know other interested parties. Uh, he and Andretti, have, it's a big stable that Andretti's got. They've got four cars that they roll. Uh, maybe if he goes to a different team, that perhaps will be a little more intention. Maybe they'll only be a two-car team or a three-car team, and that might help in terms of the amount of money they have and the attention to pay to them. Not that Andretti is ignoring them. It's just that it's a, it's a huge team. And I think you have to go, too, when your contract is in that situation. You have to try to see what's out there that maybe you can, can be beneficial to you. But, yeah, that's out there. Mm. That there is a possibility he could leave Andretti racing. Now, he'd love to finish with uh, three or four wins yeah. with four races left to try to establish himself as a hot commodity. But I'd say right now the hottest commodity is Simon Pagano. Pagano's won two races this year. He's with a small team, and uh, he's at the end of his contract. So he could be the hottest commodity in the offseason for racers. Never thought I'd be talking racing free agents, but that's what you do to me, Falzi. That's what we do. It's that time of year. It's always <laughs> somebody's got to be in a free agent frenzy. <laughs> Appreciate it, Falzi, as always. You know, and I think maybe we can use the moniker, Tim Wonderful. <laughs> yeah, one, wonderfonness, Mike. I, I, Rob, get him right. <laughs> All right. Sorry, man. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. Yeah.